Hey, welcome back. So this is part two of our kind of one point bonus section. Um, this is the second part of the one where we're talking about the EKHS mascot. Um, the link to that part is below. Remember what, how we set this up is the first time we're gonna kind of just play with numbers and see what happens. The second part we're gonna go through and we're gonna formalize this um, so that um, you're ready to go. Um, my class, remember I'm asking you guys to do this this out from behind. Um, my class is I'm asking you to do this in a separate notebook so that you've got all of the different important ideas all together. If you want to just print them out and do it that way, that's fine. Figure not everybody has printers and we'll go from there. All right, so we got three different topics here um, that we're going to hit. So I'm going to break these down. Let's say there. Maybe. So, important idea number one, okay? Categorical versus quantitative. Now, we talked a bit about this yesterday. If I could spell correctly. We talked about this briefly yesterday. We're going to kind of more formalize it here today. Um, remember, categorical variables... Take on values that have names or labels. Take on values that are names or labels. Quantitative variables. Quantitative have. Um, there are numerical. and measure a quantity. Is that readable? I think so. Um, boop, 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 doo -doo. So, those are the two differences we talked about yesterday. We now have it down. If you get stuck, you can look it up in your notes. Um, second part, displays of categories. We have now three of them, okay? So we have bar graphs. Side-by-side -side bar graphs. Uh, segmented bar graphs. Each bar shows the proportion of individuals in each corresponding category. Yay. Why wouldn't you be excited? Now, we also have something called what we just did. This thing right here. Mr. Hayes, that's not a segmented bar chart anymore because you made it fatter. So, that's called a mosaic plot. And what that happens there is it's a segmented bar chart That's been modified. Where the width is proportional to the size of the group. Okay. 
if you're doing this in a separate notebook, you probably have the benefit because then you can go as deep as you want. Note to self, make box bigger for next year. All right, last thing, association we kind of touched on yesterday. This will be the last one. Knowing the value of one variable, can help us predict the value of the other. Two variables are associated. Ta-da! All right, lots there. Welcome to stats. There's lots of writing. Um, so again, what I would suggest that you do is that I'm going to have you guys hit pause here in a second. I want you to walk, work through these problems here. Either do it on your own, or if you printed this out, you can do it on that set, you know, the separate worksheet. And then from there, unpause, and then we'll go through them, okay? So go ahead and hit pause. I'll see you in a second. Welcome back. That didn't take you that long, did it? Um, so a couple of things. So down here, we've got our two-way table. And this is all about the for, uh, people who random sample of upper level students at Rocky Vista University who are the Fighting Prairie Dogs. I told you it was a good name, um, along with the mosaic plot. And so they took the um, juniors and seniors at the university and they said, are you currently working? You're not working, but you've had a job before and you've never had a job. Okay. So with that being said, calculate the proportion of juniors that are currently working, not working, have had a job, et cetera. Okay. So juniors. Currently working. So how many juniors do we have? We have a total of bum, 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 51, right? Four, six, one, yeah. So current, I've got 14 out of 51, and that's about 27% juniors who are currently not working, but had job. So you can say, okay, that's 22 out of 51. What type of proportions are those? If you're not sure, check last or check yesterday's notes. Um, 22 out of 51. So that's going to be equal to 43%. And then junior that never had a job. And then you're going to say that's going to be 15 out of 51. So that's about 29%. Wow. There you go. Same thing for the seniors. Seniors currently working. That now here we've got 80. And that's part of the reason why this is bigger. Because notice here, if this is 50, this is going to be about one and a half times as big as that. Because one and a half of 50 is going to be 75. So it's going to be about that much wider. But even here, you can tell there's more seniors that were represented than there were juniors. So seniors that currently work, 30 out of 80, so that's 38%. Seniors not currently working, but had jobs. Um, that is going to be, what, 40 out of 80. There's 50% who did that. And then seniors who never had a job is going to be 10 out of 80. So that's going to give us, yeah, 1.2 or 12.5%, we'll say 13. So now the question down here is, can you summarize a sentence as to what the display in Part A reveals about the association between grade level and job experience for students? So we know there is some sort of association because notice, depending upon the year, the sizes are different. There is an association. between grade level and job experience. 
since the graphs are different. Parts of the graph, maybe. So, knowing if a student is a junior or senior will affect the likelihood, likely. of their employment status. Ta-da! All right, so that's it. Um, tomorrow, we'll be kicking in um, to a different topic. Um, we're going to start talking about quantitative. So we've already kind of covered in terms of how categorical works. We're going to play around with quantitative for a little bit, and then we're going to kind of sum it all up at the end. See you soon. Oh, and remember, like, subscribe, hit the little bell, all that other stuff.